Well, here we are, halfway through a Papagayo lip sync. Let me show you what I've been doing. Instead of making you watch me make all the little adjustments here, I've gone ahead and completed that, and I wanted to review those with you so you can go into it and do it yourself really quickly without having to uh, have too much muss or fuss. We've adjusted the top portion of this so that it spans the diameter of the spoken word. And then individually I've had to go in and change some of the words themselves, how long they carry across the waveforms. An easy way to do that just for confirmation is that you can click right up here in this little timeline and just drag across it or scrub it and the audio will come through. I can't believe I'm making my character talk. So we can hear that starting to match up and you can see those particular phonemes right there. Now this is far, far from ultra realistic. However, it's a great way to go ahead and get some of those special animations like something for the letter L. Look for down here and believe we'll see that. There's an L. You know, why else would you animate something like that? So it brings a little more personality to your animations when you're working with that. I have saved this file into the Section 7 animation. You can look at bot talk. .pgo and find this exact file. Well, the next step to do is to go ahead and export the voice. It's going to say, where do you want it to go? We'll say here at the animation area that we've already specified. And I'll say bot talk again. But now we're saving this as what's called a Moho switch file. And you'll say, what does Moho have to do with any of this? Well, in the way back days, Anime Studio Pro was actually called Moho. So the switch files, this is a format that Anime Studio Pro will respect and bring in. I'll go ahead and add the .dat so that we know that's a data file and select save. Now it doesn't export this actual mouth. What it's doing is exporting this information across the bottom. Let's go ahead and hop back over real quickly to Papagayo here. And we'll, or not Papagayo, Anime Studio Pro. We did add our mouth in the movie immediately preceding this, but this is where we're going to come back and open up the switch file. I'll go ahead and double click on that. And now under switch, what we want to do for source data is instead of going to the audio file, which is what we did the first time, we're looking for the bot talk data file. I'll select that and do open and choose OK. We can see now that we've got a much more compact or higher number of keyframes going through here because that data file is telling Anime Studio Pro to look for all these layers in the layer set. So now when we go ahead and scrub through this, we'll get that kind of matchup. Now, if at the end here, we can see that uh, this is stuck on the letter L. It didn't go to a rest state. Well, there's a couple ways we can fix that. One is, is to come back here and we can see that we've got a specific rest state. So I can simply come up to the top of the switch file, right click or control click if you're on the Macintosh, and look for rest. And we'll add a keyframe there. So even with this data file coming in, you can go ahead and make some modifications and add these little things yourself. But what if you wanted to go ahead and manage the data file? There is a way to do that. You need a text-based editor. I'm grabbing the data file actually out of uh, a little folder I've got here and we're going to take this over to a text editor that I've got so you can see what it looks like. We'll pop that open in a little program called Text Wrangler and what we'll see now is the Moho switch file. It's just a data file or any text file that you do as long as it's not styled like you know for, formatted with with type where it's bold or anything like that. You just save it as a .dat file. The header needs to be indicated as Moho switch 1. Now there may be other Moho switches you go to and that's when you're doing multiple dialogues and you want different switch layers to go and look at different data files. Now what's all this stuff going down here? Well, it's really easy to understand. Up here in the upper left hand corner for this first entry we have 21 and AI. 
what this is telling the program is that keyframe at the 21st keyframe load the layer AI then at keyframe 23 load the layer etc and so forth and so on as you go down really simple data file now I didn't add the rest down here this is something you could do at that particular keyframe 108 I could change this from the L layer right here to rest and we see another couple of those and then re-import this data file so that's one way to really easily and quickly work with that in Anime Studio. So the next thing to do would be to render this out. You can render it out uh, to a format if you want to preserve the audio along with this. You need to render either to a QuickTime format or an AVI format depending on what platform you're using. I'll go ahead and choose OK. We'll get some options. And I'll say here's our lip sync movie. I'll call it Final. Then we'll go ahead and save that. We get some compression settings. Oh, what a happy bot, isn't it, darling? We'll go ahead and it's rendering that right now. Just about done, and there we go. I can't believe I'm making my character talk. This is incredible. Cool stuff, huh? In our next movie, we'll go ahead and jump into our next section of animation.